Hey guys, Armor Gun here. Man, why can't this room stay clean for longer than one video? Which, as of late, has taken me like two months, but so be it. Three went out today, holy cow. So this one's on the B channel, so welcome all to my true fans who are on Arm and Armory, the B channel. But uh, today we're gonna talk about the story that I forgot to include in the main video that went live a couple hours ago, which was that I got that thing, the Dishka, um, and then the resulting collection that is also out here. And the no, that's the gun library video, because that's done now too. That'll be going live Friday morning, um, along with details on the merch drop. So pretty excited about that. Anyways, the story I didn't tell you guys was that these guns were almost, and I mean almost all destroyed. Um, so the way I framed it in the video was actually, it's true, of course, um, I, Wolverine Supplies did get this collection in, and they did let me know about it, and uh, I did get it. But I found out about it back, like, last spring, like, April or May. And uh, I was following up, like, every month, like, yo, what's going on with this collection? What's, what's happening? Like, you know, I'm really interested in a bunch of it, like, great. Um, and then it was just, it was stuck in, like, estate limbo. Um, because unfortunately, whoever had these guns before was a very good collector. He got nice stuff. The SGG44, the thing is a freaking beauty. Um, as is the dish is really clean. A lot of the, the, the milled egg, this guy had good taste. And there was more stuff here, and I'm sad to say some of it was destroyed. Couldn't save them all. Um, despite what most of you think, I'm not actually made of money. But uh, anyways, we'll get to that. Uh, so anyways... Awesome collection, but unfortunately this guy passed away whenever the, the guns went to the estate. And this estate guy was like, I don't know. I don't know what the heck he was doing because it was taking forever. But I'm a patient dude. I recognize that things in the gun industry move slow sometimes. That's okay. That's okay. Because usually it works in my favor. Because usually, again, I find way more than I can afford at any given time. And then I have to space it out. So I was like, you know what? I had some other stuff in the works. Plus, I've been saving up for this ranch purchase. I'm like, you know what? Just That's fine. It's fine. It, it's not ready to go right now. That's okay. It's cool. And then a buddy of mine sends me a text at freaking 3 a.m. when I'm in the freaking Toronto airport. Freaking A. Um, I was sleeping in the rental car waiting till the airport actually opened, security opened at 4 a.m. so I could actually go and check in for my flight back home after a long week away of work. Ah, he sends me a, a screenshot. Um, I think I had just gotten through, it was just about to go through security, I was before security. And uh, it's this post on this forum of. All these guns saying they're going to be dewatted, they need to go immediately, and the estate's closing out or whatever like that. Something like that. I'm like, what the heck? Like, I've like had a line on these things for months. And uh, here, all of a sudden, they're getting... I, I didn't even know at this point in time if they were already dewatted. Like, dewatted isn't deactivated, isn't welded up, as in a wall hanger or a desk... Uh, a paper paperweight, basically. Um... No license required, so it's a good way to pass down heritage and things like that. But, I mean, that's just sad. I was, anyways, long story. But, they were, I, I was unsure at that point. So I sent emails saying, like, hey, what's going on? Like, I thought I was kind of first in line for this stuff. And I had already said everything I wanted. I already come and checked them out and take pictures of them and looked at them. Anyways, uh, I sent that email off. And then I get on my flight. My flight's like four or five hours. And it's like, okay, I'm going to be... MIA for a while, so like hoping this stuff works out. So, yeah, I landed home. It was a stressful day. But in the end, I was also, so I'm saving up for this ranch purchase, which I've explained enough detail of in my last couple videos here. My video that went live today, and then I might talk about it a bit more. No, the Friday one is just about this gun and merch. So, uh, no more personal drama, but um, we'll save that for these vlogs. Anyways, I land. And I find out, okay, they're, they're not actually deactivated. So that's, A, that's super good news. Except for some of them that were already deactivated, but they were deactivated by the time they got them. So that was tragic, but, you know, it was not preventable on my watch. So I, I didn't feel personally guilty about it. Except for really, like, an East German AK. Oh, oh, that thing was nice too. I held it. I didn't realize that it was d at the time. But anyways, what can you do? Um, anyways, I get back and say, like, hey, like, I... I'm saving up for this down. I can't afford to take this stuff right now. Like, I can't afford to let it get welded and pass on it because look at this thing. This thing is beautiful. And and my gosh, that SCG44, holy crap. Um, 
I haven't handled one that nice before. So anyways, um, I said, what, they, they needed cash. They needed cash or for the estate. Other, or they're, and they're like, they'll move his D Watts. I'm like, ah. Oh. So called my buddy, my good buddy, Matt. And uh, he's like, well, I want the Galil, full show. So he took that. He helped me out in general. So we pulled some resources. We got it done. We saved some of these guys from the chopping block. Um, again, dewatering is better than literally chopping them and, you know, throwing the smelter, which is what sometimes the government's like, but still far less than ideal. This, the point of this channel is to be able to be like something of a virtual online museum where we can build uh, knowledge for the community and share it. And, uh, and hopefully in the summer here, everything goes well with this, with this range purchase or this ranch purchase and then setting up, subsequent setting up of a range. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing. Actually gonna be able to shoot all of these things, compare things side by side, and that's honestly, that's how I really understand firearms personally. I take something like an AK and compare it with an RPK. And it's like, okay, well, I can, you know, I can experience that. I can see what's different, the nuances, the subtle nuances. So, and then how do you compare Like, you know, an, an AK, an AKM uh, folder with the Hungarian AMD 65. Like, that's super cool. Or different countries all from a consistent source. Like, I like to consider myself, you know, a fairly consistent source. If I'm handling everything, experiencing everything firsthand and then relaying it to you, I think that's valuable information, especially if I can do it side by side with tons of guns that are historically significant and uh, share that results with you. And more than that, we can actually invite people up. Um, not that I've reached out to any of these guys, but enough of you comment saying like, oh, you know, the dish guy, Brandon Herrera's gonna come shoot that. Or, oh, I don't know how many things you guys have said that Brandon Herrera needs to come up and shoot, but clearly Brandon Herrera needs to come up and shoot here. Um, but all the other dudes as well. So I would welcome the company. We could do some great stuff together and uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So we all learn the community would benefit from the shared knowledge gained by just running a number of these awesome machine guns side by side. <laughs> Pardon me. And uh, also being in Canada, I think okay, this is where all of you guys are also saying, oh, move to the States, move to the States, bring your stuff with you. It'd be very complicated to bring my stuff with me. I have to literally set up a foreign trade zone and that would be, I've talked to a guy about that, who's done that, it would be, or I think he was trying to do that, it'd be very hard. So, um, not happening anytime soon. I'm, my life's in Canada, and right now I've got access to international guns, because Canada has open gun import laws. So, I can get all the cool, crazy stuff out of Europe and Africa, and I've actually got a bunch of stuff coming, like another 30 guns coming from Czech. On top of the other 30 guns I got coming, um, that I bought like two years ago, and didn't have room for my license, because my... My uh, <clears throat> bureaucratic overlords were a bag of dicks and chose to just drown me in red tape rather than help me. Um, or even honestly just do what they were supposed to do. Bastards. Anyways, um, <laughs> that's not how I feel at all. Anyways, um, the guys that are running it now are actually running it like they, like a business. Like they, they should be running it. They're running it for the right reasons. And I'm incredibly grateful to them. Um, anyways, uh, that's that's the spiel for today. These were going to all get chopped up. Thank you to Matt and everyone else that helped me with this stuff. Thank you to all of you to continue to support. Um, please consider jumping on the merch train because this is just the start. I didn't spend enough time talking about this awesome hoodie in my video that's going to drop Friday. This thing is really cool. This has already been washed a few times and it's still awesome. It's still covered in dog hair because I have filthy animals. And that's just something you, you just, that's part of life. It's a fact of life when you have fluffy animals. Uh, we also have a battle-worn logo shirt. I'm really fond, fond of, I'm really fond of this. It's a generic um, international spec logo. And we've got the olive drab in both the Canadian version, which is my original logo, and also with a bigger star here again, generic. And for the bros down south. And we got a boom diggity tee. Um, complete with logo, or sorry, signature. I drew that on a sticky note, by the way, and they processed it into a, processed it into a graphic. I was super impressed with that. And a little sleeve logo as well. You know, it's all good. So kindly check that stuff out. I'm going to be drawing. I have so many tea ideas. I've got like a hundred tea ideas that are all going to be super fun. So we're going to get after it. It's going to be a good time. And with that, I'll bid you adieu to the next one. Thank you all, because through your support, you enable me to save guns like these from 
welders who are honestly just trying to do their job, but still, it's tragic. Anyways, actually, what you're doing is you're saving that welder from, he's going to be sad inside. He knows he doesn't want to weld up a gun. So you do it for him. Do it for that welder that doesn't want to have to, the executioner who does not want to drop the axe. That's who you're, you're saving. So <laughs> at this point, I'm just rambling. So we're going to wrap it up here. Look for the video Friday talking about the beautiful NATO brand. Is it a total Chad, a based Chad of an LMG, or is it just overrated? We'll talk about it. See you guys. Armageddon, out.